Today is August 2nd, 2025. Four days away from 86 Day and eight days away from our 86 event at Spirit Peaks Raceway on August 10th. This is our first year co-hosting an 86 Day event and our first year up here in Washington. So I'm using this event as an opportunity to bring something to fruition that I've had in my mind for over a decade and have been off and on actively pursuing for at least five years. About 13 years ago, I actually used to be a machinist at HRE Wheels in San Diego. That's when I was first starting JSP, and I actually had to have a job to supplement the company when it was in its beginning phases. While I was working there, I fell in love with the process of designing and manufacturing custom three-piece wheels, and I knew that at some point in the future, I wanted to make a wheel of my own. Fast forward to about five years ago, when I picked up my most recent AE86, and it was time to start building that car. At that point, JSP was already CNC machining products, so I did have the capabilities of making my own three-piece wheel set, but I didn't necessarily have the experience, the know-how, or even I didn't really have a great design in my mind about what I wanted to make. Back then, I came up with designs that were mostly just sort of copies or replicas of wheels that I liked, like the SSR Longchamp or the Equip 01. Ultimately, I didn't ever complete from start to finish an actual wheel design. It was only something that I tinkered with here and there. I did some research trying to find some rim halves, just sort of figured out the feasibility of making a wheel set for my car. Fast forward to 2024 when we moved up here to Washington State. During the move, we sold about half of our machinery and also purchased one new Haas mill when we got here. One of the features that I looked into when purchasing this Haas mill specifically was that I had extended Y-axis travel so that in the future, I would have enough Y travel to be able to machine wheels. A few months ago, Matt Panic and Spirit Peaks Raceway asked me if I wanted to co-sponsor the 86 event this year. And of course, I was very happy to do so. Ever since we moved up here to Washington, I've been going to Spirit Peaks Raceway almost every single month with my car. My car has been slowly evolving and it's finally getting to a point that I'm really happy with it. So of course, this is the best opportunity to finally build that set of wheels that I've always wanted. But with only two months notice, I was gonna have to really sort of push this project forward to be able to make this deadline. So for the last month and three weeks or so, I've been finalizing a wheel design that I'm extremely happy with. I also sourced all of the rim halves that I've needed, and I even bought all of the wheel blanks that I'm gonna be using to machine the centers. I've spent countless hours 3D printing multiple different ideas, test fitting on my car. I've even taken the design and sent them to my friend who's the engineer at HRE Wheels for him to do all of the stress testing for me to make sure that this thing is not gonna fall apart on the track the first time I take it out. So like I said, it's very early, Saturday morning. I'm locking myself in the shop all weekend so that I can finish my set of wheels and have them ready for 860. All right, so let me show you guys what we're making today. The wheels are gonna be 15 by 10, minus 16 with a five inch outer lip and a five inch inner lip. The design takes inspiration from pretty much all of my favorite wheels. So it's a large four spoke wheel, like an Equip 01, that has a deep concave, sort of like a long champ, and has protruding smaller spokes kind of like a Star Shark or some of the other early SSR wheels. My idea for this is to have an old school look, but add some new school ideas to it. So most old school wheels are either sandwich mounted or rear face mounted, or the wheel center is sandwiched between the two rim halves. And what that gives you is a look of where the center is in the middle of the rim halves and all of the exposed hardware is around the outside edge. So what I created was a stepped area that separates the inside from the outside and the way that we're gonna mask, paint, and polish these centers, these outside edges here are gonna be polished with exposed hardware. So this part is actually gonna look like the rim and not the center. And the effect that I'm going for is that it's gonna look like a sandwich mounted wheel, but somehow, magically, the spokes are protruding all the way to the rim. The process for making these wheels is just gonna be two operations. We're gonna machine the bottom first, and then we're gonna machine the top second. The second side operation, the part is gonna fit inside of a fixture and holds it into the machine. Here's a quick rundown of the first operation that we're gonna set up and run right now. The material starts as a 14 by 14 by two inch chunk. We're gonna face the top. We're gonna to 2D adaptive the whole outside contour of the part. And then we're gonna use an area clearance or heavy material removal off of a 3D surface to pull all the material out of the inside. And then from there, it's just a bunch of detail work with ball nose end mills and some other smaller tools cutting out the details. Here's what it's gonna look like when the first operation is completed. So the whole backside will be machined. 
completely finished. These lug holes are a little bit undersized, but what I wanted to do was to finish the backside enough that I can go grab a hub off of my car and test fit it before I take the wheel out to make sure that there aren't any adjustments that are needed to the sizes. So let's go make one. After finishing the machining of the bottom side, I don't want to take the part out just yet. The next thing I'm going to be doing is just doing a little bit of inspection. After verification, the hub bore is pretty much perfect. The outer rim bore that goes into the rim half is actually a little bit small. So uh, I'm going to have to go back to my solid model and just verify that Maybe I didn't draw it too small. It's, it's still within tolerance, but I'd like to tighten it up a little bit. So after we finish the first wheel, verify fitment on the car, put one together just to make sure that everything is okay. I'm gonna make an adjustment to that diameter before I make the rest of the wheels. I actually bought five pieces of centers so that I could have one that was sort of a uh, proof of concept. And in case I scrapped it, I would still have enough to make a full set. So even if I scrap this one on the other side or do something else that would completely scrap it, we're still okay. I can easily still make a full set. So the next thing to do is to pull this out of the machine and then I need to make the fixture for the second operation, which is the top side. Here's the finished second up fixture. It's just a real simple plate. The wheel center is just gonna go and align off of the outer rim to the center bore. And there's eight threaded M8 holes that I've put into the wheel center. Four of them are protruding into the larger spokes. Those are gonna stay. Four others are actually gonna get drilled out after the wheel is completed so that I have through hardware around the perimeter of the wheel that isn't the raised spokes. For now, I'm gonna use all eight of those threaded holes to hold the center to the fixture so that I can machine the top side. Just wanted to take a look after all the roughing on the top. Make sure everything looks okay, looks good. Let's move on to finishing. While that center is going through all of its finishing, I need to move over to another machine and start drilling the holes into the rim halves. And I ordered the rim halves without any holes in them so I could put the holes exactly where I needed them to fit for my design. I'm simply using two socket head cap screws that are giving me a locating position on the table for an approximate location. And then the rim halves are clamped lightly to the table, one on each side, to make sure that the hole locations are perfectly centered with the bore. Each rim half is then probed before the program is run. One of my favorite toolpaths to use on a part like this is a 3D chamfer contouring toolpath. It's able to create a 3D chamfer just by following an edge around a part. So here we are, the first completed wheel center. So I'll pull this out of the machine, bolt it to some rim halves, go fit it on the car, and make any changes needed to the programming. All right, August 3rd, day number two. As you guys saw, I was able to make a prototype center yesterday and I was able to bolt it in a couple of rim halves, get it fitted on the car, everything fit great. So I went back in, adjusted the things in the programming that needed to be changed. I went ahead and spent the next six hours machining the back sides of the four actual wheels. I've adjusted all of the programming, so I'm ready to jump into the second operation and finish the top sides of all these wheels today. Hopefully I'll be able to get them all machined, prepped, and painted so that I can assemble them this week before 8 6 day. But before I jump into machining, I want to show you what I was working on yesterday while these were being machined. As you see, as these wheels come together, there's going to be a lot of masking involved when it comes to painting these wheels. And while I don't mind just using regular painter's tape and trimming it around all of the edges, that didn't sound like a lot of fun 
four or four wheels. For one, maybe it's okay. So what I worked on yesterday are actually some very simple 3D printed masks that I can use to speed up the masking process. So when I paint these wheels, it doesn't take me hours masking and prepping. Some of the areas that I'm not gonna be painting are for example, the back bore of the wheel. This is the mounting surface where the wheel attaches to the car. It also has the center bore, which is a very precise fit on the hub of the wheel. So I don't want any paint in there. So the first mask that I came up with is basically just a negative space pattern of the back pad of the wheel, plus the bore and some little raised bosses that go into the lug holes so that it can hold itself in place. Here's what that looks like with one installed. So this is fully sealed up against all of the paint edges that I need and completely stuck in there. It's not going anywhere. That is way easier than trying to cut around nicely with a little bit of masking tape. Another area that I'm masking off is this flanged edge right here because I want this to be mimicking the flange of the rim half itself. So when it's assembled, I want this to appear to be actually the rim and not the center of the wheel. So again, to mask those off, I've printed another sort of negative space cover. This has, again, screw holes. It's gonna pop into place. And it's just gonna go right up against the edge of the side of the wheel where I need everything to be masked and keep this flanged edge covered so there's no paint on it. Unfortunately, I did not find a great way to be able to mask the face of the wheel. The large four spokes are gonna stay raw. I am gonna to have to do that with some masking tape, but these 3D printed masks are gonna save me a ton of time. Today is going to be a really long day, so let's get started. While these four wheels are running, let's mask and paint our first wheel that we made yesterday. I'll start by pressing in the back bore 3D print, and then I 3D printed a rim flange edge 3D print. This is going to cover the back area. I also 3D printed the lug plugs. These are going to keep paint out of the area that the lug nuts go, and then these flange edge prints go on. So this is a really quick process to get the whole wheel masked. Now let's go throw some paint on it. I'll be painting the centers in three stages. First, a sandable primer goes on and then a Duplicolor automotive paint followed by a Spraymax 2K clear coat. The clear coat's gonna protect the paint from brake dust and other debris at the track to make sure that the paint stays looking nice for as long as possible. All of the masking worked great. Everything pulled off easily and everything had a really nice sharp paint edge when I was completed. The second operation on the wheel face each takes about two hours. So it was sort of a rinse and repeat for the entire day where I would load a part into the machine and the part that came out of the machine would then get cleaned up, deburred, masked, and painted. And then due to the time constraint of only having this weekend to do this, I would let the wheel centers dry for about an hour and then I would begin assembly, very carefully assembling the centers into the wheels to make sure that I didn't actually touch any of the painted surfaces. It's about 8 p.m. on Sunday evening, but I think we've done it. So I've got three wheels put together already. This is the very last wheel that I just finished painting about 30 minutes ago, so I'm gonna be very careful touching it. Let's put it together. So here we are. Here is our finished wheel face. All the masking worked out great. Paint went on no problem. I polished the flanged edges before painting, so it should somewhat generally look like the rim half like I originally wanted. So let's put it together. So for now, I'm just gonna snug these up finger tight um, I'm going to go back and retorque all of the wheels and also seal them and then show you guys the final product. There we are. A one of one set of JSP 15 by 10 minus 16 three piece billet wheels.
So I think I'm actually gonna end the video here. What I'm gonna do is I'll do a follow-up video once I get the tires mounted and the wheels situated on the car. And I'll probably also cover the 8-6 day event at Spirit Peaks next weekend. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments.